So that today in this session we would learn about the anatomy of testes. So testes or the testicles are the male gonads which are reproductive part of male genitalia responsible for the production of sperm and testosterone. At birth testis measures approximately 1.5 cm in length and 1 cm width and uh, reaching around 4 ml volume at puberty. In normal adults, the testes are ovoid and measures approximately 3 cm anteroposterior thickness and 2 to 4 cm in transverse diameter and 3 to 5 cm in its length and with a volume of 12.5 to 19 ml. However, the size of the testis decreases with the age. The testis hangs in suspension and is attached to the spermatic cord and are covered externally by the loose wrinkly pigmented skin known as the scrotum. And testis is attached to the inner wall of the scrotum by a ligament called as testicular ligament. So testis is adherent to the scrotum by testicular ligament. And just inside the scrotum there are several layers that protect the testicular tissue. So the layers from inside out are the skin, deep to the skin is the dartos layer Deep to the dartos layer is the external spermatic fascia which is the continuation of external oblique muscle of abdomen. And deep to the external spermatic fascia is the cremastered muscle. Cremastered muscle is the continuation of internal oblique muscle of abdomen. So deep to the cremaster muscle layer is the parietal tunica vaginalis. So parietal layer of tunica vaginalis deep to the parietal layer is the visceral layer of tunica vaginalis. And deep to this uh, visceral layer of tunica vaginalis, the testis is covered by tunica alvaginia. Tunica vaginalis is a peritoneal sac that partially encloses the testis. It is derived from the embryonic vaginal process and it has parietal layer and visceral layers. The visceral internal layer covers the testis, the head of the epididymis and inferior part of ductus deferens. The parietal external layer covers the distal part of the spermatic cord and then continues over the visceral layer of tunica vaginalis and covers the duct of epididymis before blending with the visceral layer. So between the layers is a small amount of serous fluid that prevents friction and allows the testis to move in the scrotum. Epididymis Epididymis courses along the posterior lateral aspect of the testis. Which is along the posterior lateral aspect of the testis. It has two distinct components, efferent ductules which form an enlarged coiled mass that sits on the posterior superior pole of the testis and forms the head of the epididymis. And the true epididymis, the second part is the true epididymis which is a single long coiled duct into which the efferent ductules all drain and which continues inferiorly along the posterolateral margin of the testis as the body of epididymis and enlarges to form a tail of epididymis at the inferior pole of the testis. So during the passage through the epididymis, spermatozoa acquire the ability to move and fertilize an egg. The epididymis also stores spermatozoa 
until ejaculation. The end of the epididymis is continuous with the ductus difference. Let's see the blood supply. The testis is supplied by testicular arteries arising from abdominal iota. So these are the testicular arteries. Which are arising from the iota and just below the level of origin of renal arteries. Besides the testicular arteries, the testes also have a collateral blood supply formed by the cremastric artery. So, the branch of inferior epigastric artery and the artery to the ductus difference, that is the branch of inferior vesicle artery, they also supply the testes. And this is important during obstruction of testicular arteries because this collateral flow helps the testes to survive. Venous drainage and lymphatic drainage of testis. The testis is drained by pampeniform plexus of veins. So, which continues in as the testicular veins and this plexus surrounds the branches of testicular artery and which is a very important for temperature regulation, the veins of the plexus cool the artery that uh, carry warm arterial blood before it enters the testis, thus acting as counter current heat exchanger. The right testicular vein directly drains into inferior vena cava. while the left testicular vein drains into left renal vein. Innervation of testis. Testis receives autonomic supply that is from both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic innervation from the spermatic fluxes. This spermatic flux, fluxes which are otherwise called testicular fluxes originating from the paraiotic ganglion with the root value as T10 to T12. And parasympathetic supply has the root value as S2 to S4. Histology of the testis. The testis uh, are the retroperitoneal structures from the time of development until they descend into their final adult position in the scrotum. So, the testicular tissue is comprised of 200 to 300 lobules that are separated by connective tissue septa in a radiating fashion from mediastinum testis. So, these are the connective tissues septa which are radiating from the mediastinum testis. So, the medial testis is the mediastinum testis. And within the each septa there are coiled tubules which are called as seminiferous tubules. So, each lobule contains 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules. And these seminiferous tubules that are coiled extremely tight and are approximately 1 meter in length when straight. And this is the place where the spermatozoa and sex hormones are produced. 
and before entering the mediastinum they change to the straight course so that this segment that each convoluted tubule becomes a straight seminiferous tubule straight tubules enter the mediastinum by interconnecting and they form a collecting chamber called the reti testis Spermatogenesis takes place approximately 74 days to complete and about 200 to 300 spermatozoa are produced every day and about half of these become viable sperms the testis contains the seminiferous tubules with laid egg or interstitial cells the tubules are lined with a layer of seminiferous epithelium which contains supporting cells called as cert sertoli cells or sustentacular cells and also the seminiferous epithelium apart from sertoli cells it contains spermatogenic cells and laid egg cells secrete testosterone hormone or androtestosterone hormone or dehydroandrotestosterone hormone and when stimulated by the pituitary hormones called as luteinizing hormone and seminiferous tubules carry the sperm via the tubular recti into a dilated space within the mediastinum testis which is known as reti testis which drains into the epididymis through 10 to 15 efferent ductules so here we can see the efferent ductules efferent ducts in the head of the epididymis which is considered as globus major and unite to form a single duct called as globus minor in the body and tail region which continues as ductus deferens also known as vas deferens the tubules converge in the posterior region of the testis and collective amount of the product is released into the network of reti testis so this completes the anatomy of testis Thank you